It's going to develop fast. It's going to be very scary. It's going to be very disruptive. It's going to turn everything you thought you knew upside down. And uh, I have faith that humanity will find a way through. You know, I'm not, I'm not quite, I, I don't think you can ignore it any more than you can ignore air power, machine guns, or nuclear weapons. I don't think you can ignore it. But um, I, do, I, I don't think anybody really understands the profoundly disruptive revolutionary implications yet. The only mistake would be not to be paying attention. You should be investing time and energy to, to conceptualize how you do what you do and then, con and then reconceptualize what your customers are, you know, are doing and how they might do it differently and, and try to work your way down the value chain and try to figure out what gets dematerialized and what is the national rational response. And if you can figure that out 36 months or tw 24 months before anybody else, right, then that makes all the difference. Michael Saylor has a remarkable ability to spot groundbreaking technologies early on, as demonstrated by his successful ventures in the dot-com era and his foresight in investing in tech giants like Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and Google. In 2020, Saylor recognized Bitcoin as a robust currency and transformed MicroStrategy's destiny by converting their liquid assets into Bitcoin, resulting in a significant increase in the company's value. Now, Saylor sees a new frontier in the form of artificial intelligence which he believes presents an even greater opportunity than Bitcoin. AI has surpassed cryptocurrency as the fastest adopted technology in history, exemplified by the rapid rise of ChatGPT, which amassed an astonishing 100 million users within two months. Saylor emphasizes that entrepreneurs and innovators have a limited window of approximately 12 months to seize the ground floor opportunity in AI, which can lead to exponential wealth and the realization of novel ideas. While maintaining his unwavering conviction in Bitcoin as a secure asset and investment instrument, Saylor believes that AI represents the most significant opportunity of our time for those looking to build and innovate. However, Saylor also contemplates the potential consequences of AI. He suggests that it could either spearhead the greatest revolution in history or herald the end of humanity as we know it. Despite these possibilities, Saylor's belief in Bitcoin remains fortified. While the specifics of Saylor's conversations and views on AI mentioned in the original text are fictional, the broader understanding of his talent for identifying groundbreaking technologies and his confidence in both Bitcoin and the potential of AI remain valid. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. You know, I, I think uh, one threat is, is as institutions and organizations get bigger and more powerful, power is centralizing at the top of them. So now you have organizations that control what a billion people can say every day. And you have, uh, you have organizations that can, that can change the value of 8 billion people's money. And you have organizations that can distort, you know, how billions of people think, right? And, and uh, so I think that uh, in a world where everything was decentralized, no one person could determine what everybody else was thinking at the same time. I, I think that that was a, a safer world. I think it's an existential threat for uh, the people that run, you know, certain governments, agencies and networks to be able to control what you can think, what you can say, uh, what you can know. And I think that Bitcoin and, and its promise can help us reverse that trend. I think we can reverse the centralization and we can decentralize both by moving the monetary energy uh, into the hands of the people and out of the hands of the organizations. Like, for example, I, I can literally bankrupt every single person in the country if I control the government and the central bank. Like I can impoverish and everybody, right? So shifting the control of that into the hands of the people, if, if they were using Bitcoin, the person that ran a country couldn't impoverish everybody on a whim, right? So I think that's one uh, advantage or one important imperative. I think that AI, AI is a bit of a threat in a way that if, um, if an AI can, uh, and if an AI can reproduce our interview, and take a picture of me and have me say whatever it wants in my voice, right? In a way yeah. imperceptible, then it's possible to counterfeit any message and counterfeit uh, and counterfeit any document 
And so I think it's more important than ever that we master strong encrypt encryption and digital signatures. We're, we're going to need, for, at some point, we need uh, for me to be able to digitally sign this interview so that uh, I can prove that I'm the one that spoke to you and said these things. And so if I could sign this video or watermark it with my private key, then when we get to a point where an AI can generate a million of these interviews and they can have me saying anything they want, right? they can have me talking about food and politics and, you know, and my childhood and whatever, which one is the real interview? If you go on Twitter, you know, an AI could spin up a um, hundred million Twitter accounts that would actually be more articulate than a hundred million real people on Twitter. That, that they would be more charming, more articulate, more interesting, and more engaged and indefatigable, right? And so that's a disturbing thing, right? We can no longer rely upon f information freely flowing unverified. We need to see a world, for example, where there's an orange check, like where I, I, I need um, a, a passport, a cyber passport. If I can prove that I'm me by doing a transaction on the Bitcoin base layer, and then I have the private key, and then I digitally sign that transaction, and then I digitally sign my account on Twitter, and I digitally sign my account on WhatsApp and Telegram and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Office 365, and then I digitally sign the documents I write, the messages I deliver, the transactions I, uh, I agree to, in that world, I could at least stop a hundred million fake Michael sailors from confusing and phishing and scamming and distorting reality. Because you know what? The AI version of me is actually going to be a lot more productive and more interesting than the real version of me sometime in the next few years. I, I don't know how far we'll get, but what I would say is that uh, I studied uh, I studied the history of science at MIT. That was another one of my degrees after aeronautical engineering. And I uh, studied the scientific revolution, revolutions and how did every major science, scientific field evolve? And what you find is there's this S curve. People for a thousand years try to fly. <clears throat> and then in 1900, they failed 500 ways. And everybody says, there's no way it'll ever work. And then in 1903, the Wright brothers figure out how to fly. And then there's this ferocious uh, development for the next 66 years. And by 1969, we're standing on the moon. And then everything slows down. And so you'll have these periods of nothing, and then you will spurt, and you will run really hard, and then you will slow down. And so I think with, uh, with AI, what we had is people scratching at the field uh, in a frustrated fashion without making any material breakthroughs for years and years and years. You know, we had the early versions of Alexa and Siri and, and you know, they let you pick your playlist off of, you know, off of Amazon Music, but not much more than that. And I think of the year 2022, we broke through and now the 2022 was like the iPhone 3 moment. iPhone 3 was the first version of the iPhone where you said, wow, this operating system is going to compete with the web. And uh, iPhone 1 and iPhone 2 were toys and iPhone 3 was real. And then what happens next is Apple stock 10 X's and the world changes and billions and billions of people adopt mobile phones. I think we're at that moment, that inflection moment, the first 12 months. I think the next 10 years is a sprint. <clears throat> and uh, there's going to be this massive Cambrian explosion of ideas and people are going to push the envelope. I don't think you can stop it. I, I mean, I think people will try to regulate it. It's not going to work to regulate it because there's going to be some country or some corporation that's going to have an economic or a political interest in pushing this. It's going to develop fast. It's going to be very scary. It's going to be very disruptive. It's going to turn everything you thought you knew upside down. And uh, I have faith that humanity will find a way through. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite, I, I don't think you can ignore it any more than you can ignore air power, machine guns, or nuclear weapons. I don't think you can ignore it. But um, 
I do. I, I don't think anybody really understands the profoundly disruptive revolutionary implications yet. The only mistake would be not to be paying attention. You should be investing time and energy to to conceptualize how you do what you do, and then can and then reconceptualize what your customers are you know are doing and how they might do it differently, and and try to work your way down the value chain. And try to figure out what gets dematerialized, and what is the national rational response. And if you can figure that out, 36 months or 24 months before anybody else, right? Then that makes all the difference. Ultimately, uh, there are profound breakthroughs to be made on these new platforms. I, I don't think my advice is you don't study the platforms that made the previous generation successful. Right, engineers that, po that that planned the Apollo space launch, they did their engineering with slide rules. I didn't study it, you know? I use an HP 15C calculator, but don't study that either. Then there came a spreadsheet and then it, you know, then there was Python and et cetera, and there was the internet. But don't, don't fight the last war. Don't study the thing, you know, like even the music. Yeah, I like Mozart and Beethoven and I like classical music. But if I was a genius today, I wouldn't be trying to duplicate what Beethoven did. I would be thinking, you know, if Beethoven lived today, maybe Beethoven would design an entire virtual world indistinguishable from the real world that's more beautiful, right? <laughs> or maybe, you know, it, it just, you got to figure out what's the new thing and, and you engineer the greatest thing you can create with the materials given to you. There'd be no air travel without aluminum. And, uh, you know, there, there, there always is the engine, the silicon engine, you know, the internal combustion engine, whatever it is. So today we can see clearly the engines of growth or, you know, crypto networks like Bitcoin is an engine, you know, uh, AI tools are an engine. There will be other engines. Right, master those platforms. Like even, you know, even if you saw what just happened, uh, Tucker Carlson is leaving Fox, and he just posted a video on on uh, Twitter, and that video went through 20 million views in 24 hours. And if you look at it carefully, you say, "Oops, he added 400,000 followers in less than 24 hours. He got more than 20 million views. 95 million people saw the tweet." What if he goes from 7 million followers on Twitter to 70 million followers on Twitter, right? Then you, you, you st and that video, that video was an ultra wide format HD or super HD video. And my reaction was, I've never seen such a high quality video posted anywhere, you know? And so, so if you're constrained by the shackles of the last technology, the last network, the last platform, the last way to do it, you're holding yourself back. You know, you yourself have just gone off on your own with the David Lynn report. I applaud it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Right? Thanks for not cutting me off after like three minutes or seven minutes, right? Or a 10 minute interview, right? Right? I mean, so the world of possibilities is ahead of us. It's pretty, it's pretty clear that mastering the new technologies and the new platforms to create new things never before possible, right, is the way forward. That's my advice I would give to anybody starting their career. Michael Saylor emphasizes the undeniable presence of extraordinary technological advancements on the horizon, particularly in the field of artificial intelligence. The potential for AI to redefine industries and generate exponential wealth is immense. While Saylor remains a staunch advocate for Bitcoin as a secure investment, he acknowledges the unprecedented opportunity that AI presents for entrepreneurs and innovators. However, he also cautions that treading this new frontier requires caution and foresight. It is crucial to recognize that while the emergence of AI brings immense possibilities, it also brings its own challenges. The impact of this groundbreaking technology can either usher in an unparalleled revolution or dramatically alter the course of humanity. Nevertheless, Saylor's confidence in Bitcoin remains unshaken, as he views it as a dependable asset. As we conclude this insightful video, it is important to reflect on these perspectives and consider their implications on investment decisions in the evolving landscape of AI. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen.
Click now and we will see you on the next video.